What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. I have some exciting news for you guys because we just got the Series 8 rule set announced and this is absolutely huge because we have pretty much a new format that hasn't been used in previous years. So if you're not familiar with what GS Cup is, GS Cup is when you're allowed to use two restricted Pokemon per team. Those are things like Xerneas, Eveltal, uh, Groudon, Kyogre, uh, any legendary Pokemon that isn't mythical that was not allowed in previous formats, like that's what's allowed. However, this is like GS Cup light mode because we're only allowed one legendary per team. And I swear, I feel like it's game. I feel like Game Freak messes with us sometimes because we had been testing and theory crafting for two restricted Pokemon GS Cup, and they're like, "No, check this out, one." That's insane. So if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications because I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content and answer my comment question of the day. What's the first restricted Pokemon you're going to be using on your team? So yeah, what I want to do today is just go through some of the restricted Pokemon and talk about how I feel about them in the upcoming format and why I think this is so huge that we only get one per team. So let's start off with that actually. Why is one per team such a big deal? Basically what you would do in previous GS Cup formats was you would take the one restricted Pokemon and pair it with another one that just balanced it really, really well. So Groudon Xerneas was a huge one back in the day. You would use Groudon to check the various steel and poison types that Xerneas wasn't able to immediately Oko or that threatened Xerneas. So those were really big together. Uh, we had Kyogre Yveltal, which was another great combo. We had Kyogre Rayquaza, which was really good when Primals were in the format. However, now it might not be amazing, especially now that you know you can't actually use it. But if, if we were able to use two Pokemon, I don't know how amazing it would be. Uh, but yeah, so that's really interesting. We only get one per team, so it kind of throws all those archetypes out the window. So maybe now instead of Groudon Xerneas, we have Landorus Xerneas. Or maybe instead of Kyogre Veltal, we have like Moltres Kyogre, something like that. Like it's going to be a really interesting format just in terms of theory crafting and just it's, it's a lot of new ground that's being broken. This is like such a crazy precedent. On top of that, we have new restricted Pokemon that haven't been explored all that much. Uh, we have the Calyrex forms, Zacian, Zamazenta, rest in peace, you're going to be so bad, but I really want to use Zamazenta, I love the base form. But yeah, anyways, uh, I think now I can like move on to my thoughts on each individual Pokemon that is allowed in the format now. So basically, these are mythical Pokemon, they're not actually allowed, so no, you can't use Mew, I'm sorry for all the Mew fans. However, let's let's get into it. So Mewtwo, the OG Legendary. I feel like it's gonna be pretty eh. Let me actually open up Pokemon Showdown so I can talk about their movesets. So, as you can see, um, I've already been messing around with a couple of things. So, Mewtwo. Mewtwo is pretty interesting. Uh, it's super fast, it's Tapu Koko speed. However, it's less fast than Dragapult, which I feel like will still definitely have a presence in the metagame because of its speed. So I don't think it's going to be great. 154 is insane for a special attack set, and it's really bulky with 106 HP and 90 in both defenses. It also has great coverage. You might see some usage, but I don't think it's going to be people's main squeeze. I mean, there are a couple of other Pokemon that kind of just outclass it in terms of psychic types. I feel like the new Calyrex Shadow form is pretty much just objectively better because it has better coverage, it, it hits more things, or it has better like stab coverage. Like obviously Mewtwo has access to like Ice Beam, it has access to like Earthquake. It has, it's basically like the biggest move pool you could have on a legendary. Um, so I feel like it might still see some kind of usage on a very particular build. I don't know what that build's gonna be. And Psy Strike is such a cool move too. It's basically just stronger Psy Shock, so you're able to hit things on the physical defensive side uh, rather than the special defensive side, which might be big when you're facing things like. I don't know, other legendary Pokemon, like being able to two-hit KO Kyogre is probably going to be something that people want. Uh, and in terms of Dynamax, I mean, it's going to be really strong, don't get me wrong, but I feel like Mewtwo might not be a Pokemon that wants to Dynamax as much when you have the option of running one of the strongest expanding forces in the game. I wonder if Calyrex gets it. It does get expanding force, so maybe not. <laughs> I mean, Calyrex is stronger, it's faster, it's not as bulky, but it does... But Mewtwo like does have more coverage, so I feel like Mewtwo will see some mild usage, but not insane usage. Um, next up is Lugia. Lugia is pretty interesting. I mean, 
it's really bulky and with multi-scale it can do some stuff. It's just not like the most offensive Pokemon. I feel like if you're gonna use Lugia, it's definitely just gonna be like a weakness policy, arrow blast, psychic set. It's gonna be very basic. Uh, Ho-Oh, by the way, I have a class soon, so I'm not trying to stay on this for too long. Uh, Ho-Oh is, I feel like it's gonna be one of the better ones. 130 base attack is kind of crazy. Like Lugia is like super defensive, right? But Ho-Oh is super defensive with insane offense at 130. It also has access to Sacred Fire, which is really cool. And Max Airstream coming off of Brave Bird is really awesome. The insane bulk is gonna be huge. And when you're running something like Regenerator, where you can switch it in and out to recover HP, now that you know it's we can actually use the hidden ability reliably and not have to get it from an event, that's really big. Uh, I feel like when you can't combo it next to Kyogre, it isn't quite as useful, because we did see Ho-Oh Kyogre in previous formats. Um, but now that like you can't combo it with a strong, powerful water type like that, uh, it feels kind of underwhelming in comparison. Kyogre, I think, is objectively going to be one of the best Pokemon in this format, and that's strictly because of its decently high speed tier at 90, its insane special attacks at 150, the ability drizzle, and the fact that you can just throw a scarf on this thing and be done. You can run Water Spout, and if you end up taking some damage, you can switch out and go for like Origin Pulse. It has access to things like Ice Beam. We have seen Icy Wind Kyogre in the past, and it definitely wants to run Thunder for coverage. So Kyogre is going to be one of the best Pokemon in this format. It always has been one of the best GS Cup Pokemon, and there isn't really much to say beyond that. Groudon, now that it's lost its primal form, I feel like we'll still see a lot of usage because of just how powerful Prespice Blades are. But when we have things in the format that can kind of wall it out, um, you know, just water types in general, Pokemon with Intimidate that can switch in and out. Landers, for one, is going to be a huge issue for this guy. Landers will see a lot more usage now that Groudon isn't like the ground type. If you're running Xerneas, you might see Landers. So I, I feel like Groudon's still going to be fine. It's not going to want to run like Eruption or a special set because it doesn't have the primal form anymore. It doesn't have fire typing. It's just going to be like Precipice Blade, Stomping Tantrum. And yes, you do run those two together. It's really cool probably like protect fire punch just the standard set i could even see like choice band groudon being a thing or maybe even life orb groudon that would definitely be a really interesting thing to see considering we haven't seen a lot of life orb groudon in the past rayquaza i feel bad for this guy i feel bad for this guy because his speed and his defenses like when you look at the other pokemon from his generation like his whole thing is he's able to hit on either the special or physical side but when we have things like Calyrex and stuff running around in the format, Rayquaza is kind of invalidated in a lot of ways, just because it's not as fast as other Pokemon. Regieleki can definitely give it a lot of issues by slowing it down even further. But the one thing it does have is Dragon Ascent, which is the strongest freaking move ever. <laughs> just because like you don't take recoil, you do lower your defense and your special defense. Like it's like close combat, but flying type. And the fact that it can go for a max airstream off of that is really crazy. It could also run a mix set. It does get access to a lot of coverage like Thunderbolt, like um, Flamethrower, like it has, it has all these different things, but I just really don't see it being the best Pokemon. And now we're on to Gen 4 Pokemon. Dialga is really interesting. It's a Dragon and Steel type, which normally like that's an insane typing, but um, I mean, I feel like with access to things like strong fighting type Pokemon right now, it might not be the best, however it is extremely bulky and I could see it being an amazing Dynamax Pokemon purely because it's so easy to go for like, I don't know, like Bulldoze Weakness Policy. It's only weak to ground moves too, I believe, since it's Dragon Steel. Am I right? I believe I'm right. It's only weak to ground moves. Oh no, fighting moves. Um, but it's just such a strong Pokemon and access to 150 base special attack and being able to drop things like max warm winds to lower things offenses is really cool um, Historically, it's been a pretty decent trick room setter and that was only really when it had access to Like Kyogre next to it. I could see it still being a decent trick room Pokemon But since there's less room for legendaries on teams, I feel like Dialga in particular won't want to trick room as much because when you don't have as many legendaries on teams the overall speed stat goes down and then like better trick room pokemon exist like slower trick room pokemon can exist like because prior base 70 in like a restricted format was like oh that's prime trick room stuff right but now it's like yeah it's it's kind of eh because we have another slot that can be filled by a better pokemon so that's interesting i think that dialga might see some usage overall but not a lot uh palkia I mean, we did see some Palkia. We did see some Palkia in previous formats. 
Uh, Max Geyser is definitely really good. Being only weak to fairy moves is absolutely insane. Like these guys have some of the best defensive typings. Diagram Palkia, they're insane. Um, and base 100 speed is faster than a lot of other Pokemon in the format. Like just hitting base 100 is a pretty big accomplishment in the face of like Rayquaza, Kyogre, Groudon, um, Dialga, I suppose. Uh, however, this overall speed tier has gone up quite a bit in terms of legendaries because we are seeing things like base 150 legendaries. We are seeing things like base 148 legendaries. It's, it's not quite as good, but I do think that being able to go for super, super powerful Max Geysers is going to be a nice option. However, keep in mind that Kyogre's Max Geysers are usually going to be stronger. Really, the only draw to this thing, I would say, is the increased coverage and access to dragon moves, uh, which doesn't always come in handy, but it, it might actually see some usage, like maybe with like Comfey Palkia. We could see like a Comfey Weakness Policy Palkia team. I think that'd be pretty cool. Giratina, I actually need to pull up two for this guy. I feel like Giratina could see some usage, uh, and that's just because of how insanely bulky it is, right? So we have Giratina, Origin Form, which has to hold the Grissius Orb, meaning that its offenses are actually pretty decent when its Dragon and uh, Ghost moves are increased by 20%. So it could see some decent usage. It has access to like Draco Meteor and Shadow Ball, or if you want to be insane, you could run the physical set and run like Shadow Force, which is 120 base power. It does a lot of damage, right? Uh, and I guess if you Dynamax it, it could be pretty strong. However, I feel like when you can like just run Dragapult as a faster Pokemon with better offenses, like what's Dragapult's base attack set? Isn't it like 120 as well? Yeah, Dragapult has like the same offenses. It's not quite as bulky, but it still can deal, deal out a lot of damage. So I don't know. I, I feel like Giratina won't see a ton of usage. However, when you're able to have 150 base HP with 120 in both defenses, it is very difficult to knock it out when you Dynamax and double that. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, we might see some Giratina, but I don't see a lot like happening. Okay, so now we're onto the Gen 5 legendaries. I mean, Reshiram, Zekrom, and the Kyurem forms are all really, really good Pokemon, but I don't know how great they're gonna be in a Dynamax format. Once again, these are like base 90 speed Pokemon, which the speed tier has gone up an insane amount. On top of that, they're both weak to ground moves, which uh, both of the Calyrex forms have access to. And while they are really powerful with like 150 base offenses, I just don't see them being insanely good. I could maybe make a case for Reshiram if it has like decent access to like flying moves, like good flying moves. However, uh, the flying moves it has are all physical. So if it had like special flying moves, maybe it could be like a max air streamer that did a lot of damage. Zekrom, you might be able to make a case for Max Airstream Zekrom, especially when you can go for like Weakness Policy next to it. It has like a decent amount of Pokemon that could activate a Weakness Policy on it, but overall I just don't really see it being incredible. However, Zekrom would be a huge damage dealer, don't get me wrong. I think that if you Max Airstream with the Zekrom, you're just going to take KOs. Uh, with that 150 base attack, it's going to be kind of crazy. Now, Kyurem, I really don't see having any usage, and that's just because Dragon Ice is not the best typing, especially when you're hitting like 95 base speed and you're kind of frail. Base 109 Pokemon, I, I, I guess Kartana in particular, um, it can outspeed it, it can deal a lot of damage to it, a max steel spike is not something you want to take, and overall just the frailty of the Dragon Ice typing isn't great. You're better off going with some of the other Kyurem forms, considering they're just direct upgrades to what we have with this one. So. Why would you use the 130, 130, 95 when you could use 170, 120, 95 or 120, 170, 95 and they also become slightly bulkier. I feel like Kyurem Black isn't going to be as threatening as Kyurem White strictly because Kyurem White doesn't have to worry about getting intimidated. Yes, a snarl is kind of annoying, but when you're able to throw off powerful moves like um, freaking Life Orb, because you can slap a Life Orb on this thing, like Life Orb Earth Power, uh, like... Life Orb, Max Hailstorm, I don't know why I just typed that in. Ice Beam, that's what I was trying to type in. Um, you could even run Ice Burn if you wanted to, but it wouldn't be ideal. Like you could do like Max Ice Burn, it'd be an insanely powerful move. I feel like Kyurem White is actually gonna see some usage because of this, so yeah. Uh, as far as the Gen 5 Pokemon go, the only Pokemon I can see seeing a ton of usage is gonna be Kyurem White. So now we're up to the Gen 6 Pokemon. I feel like of all these, it's gonna be Eveltal that's the best. And the reason is, if we look at Eveltal, stat-wise, it's got 126 HP, 131 attack, 95 defense, 131 special attack, 98 special defense, and 99 speed. 
Granted, Xerneas has the exact same stat spread, but what Eveltal is going for it is a very powerful move in Oblivion Wing, which can be turned into max Airstream, and the fact that Dark Pulse will be turned into max Darkness. So when max Darkness activates on a Pokemon, it's going to decrease its special defense stat, meaning that your max Airstream coming up will be doing a lot more damage. On top of that, this thing is Dark Aura boosted, so it's pretty much got like a free Life Orb on all of its Dark moves, which is absolutely insane. And when you're done max air streaming or max darknessing, Oblivion Wing will be a great move to recover HP with. On top of that, 99 base speed is really high for the format, considering how many Pokemon are hitting like 90 and 95. Yes, it is slower than other Pokemon like uh, the new Calyrex forms, but it absolutely bodies the Shadow Calyrex form, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it also has access to things like Sucker Punch and Heat Wave if you really want to run something like that, but overall I feel like this thing is going to be a phenomenal Pokemon. Assault Vest, Weakness Policy, Life Orb, whatever you want to run on it, it's going to do a lot of work. Xerneas, I think, is going to be kind of garbage. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. We have a lot of Steel types, we have a lot of pretty decent Poison types, uh, and the way that people tunnel vision around Geomancing with Xerneas is kind of bad. If you're not going to tunnel vision around the Geomancy, you can make a case for Xerneas. You could definitely make a case for Xerneas, but I guarantee you most of them are still going to be running the Power Herb, uh, the Power Herb Geomancy stuff. Um, and the reason I don't think it's going to work is because of Dynamax. So the way that you would use to guarantee Xerneas' Geomancy was either a Follow Me user and Geomancy or a Fake Out user and a Geomancy. There are other board positioning ways you can like get your Geomancy off, but it's a lot more difficult when Dynamax exists. And the reason is, you can't fake out a Dynamax Pokemon, and once Xerneas does get plus two special attack, there are going to be a lot more Dynamax Pokemon that can eat the hit really, really well. Xerneas has absolutely no way of destroying a stack attacker, because I don't believe it got any ground moves, and yes, it does have close combat, but you're not going to run that on a Geomancy set, so kind of see where I'm coming from here. On top of that, things like Zacian exist, things like Zamazenta exist, that can really destroy this thing if uh, you just let them, you know, get through your defenses. So yeah, that's something that you need to keep in mind with Xerneas. Zygarde I could see actually being really good. This is kind of crazy. Do you guys remember the Zygarde Max Raid? <laughs> Have you played the Zygarde Max Raid? It's kind of crazy. It's really hard to break through double 216 HP with these defenses. I definitely anticipate it to just be Dragon Dance, uh, Thousand Arrows, um, whatever Dragon move it gets, I forget, was it? I think it just runs Outrage or something. It could run Scale Shot, Scale Shot wouldn't be awful. Uh, it gets Breaking Swipe too, which could be not that bad. And that's pretty much all it needs, you know? It, it, could, even run it could even run Coil. Coil was something that people ran before, and you would run like Tapu Fini with Misty Seed on this thing next to it, and you would just Misty Seed, Coil, you would go for Heal Pulse with your Tapu Fini, and you would just break through entire teams with your impenetrable defenses, and when you can double that HP, it becomes even harder to break through this Pokemon. So yeah, I think Zygarde's going to be a huge threat in the next format. So the next generation we have is Gen 7 Legendaries, and these guys were really decent in previous formats, Lunala especially was insane with a Z move. But I don't know how good they're going to be this time around. Base 97 is really nice. You wall out you wall out Zamazenta, absolutely. There isn't anything Zamazenta can do to mess with Solgaleo. Um, but overall, I think as a Dynamax Pokemon, it's not phenomenal. You can kind of run it like a Metagross. You could run like Bulldoze Weakness Policy and deal a lot of damage to things with Max Sun Steel Strike, uh, with Zen Headbutt turned into, or I think it even gets Psychic Fangs now, which is objectively better. Yeah, you can run like Psychic Fangs to break screens and deal a lot of damage with Max uh, Mindstorm. It does get decent coverage with like Flare Blitz and uh, I believe it gets Wild Charge. It might not. It does get Wild Charge. So there are a lot of things you can run with this Pokemon at base 97 speed. It's really decent. I think it'll be all right. And especially since you can't get intimidated, it's probably going to be one of the better physical attackers. But I don't know if it'll be the best Pokemon in the format when you have so many options like uh, Calyrex Shadow that could completely invalidate this Pokemon. So keep that in mind, I guess. Next up we have Lunala, which, eh, eh, Calyrex Shadow pretty much one-shots it most of the time. Like, yeah, you could Dynamax and have Shadow Shield, uh, but mm, I, I don't know. I just don't see it being great. Does it get Hurricane? It does not. Does it get, like, Air Slash? I, I guess if it could max Airstream, yeah, it gets Air Slash, so maybe it could, like, run a Weakness Policy max Airstream set, or maybe just, 
I mean, yeah, the Shadow Shield's gonna be nice, and it is decently defensive, so maybe you could do something with it, but I just don't see Lunala being amazing. Expanding Force would hurt coming off of this guy, but if you're gonna run a Psychic Ghost type, I would say just run Calyrex Shadow. That's just how I see it. Necrozma, it's not gonna see usage, but the other forms of Necrozma, I feel like they're just probably gonna be great. Once again, this thing, Calyrex Shadow, is probably better, but this is a better Trick Room setter. I feel like Necrozma Dustmane is going to be slept on for the first couple of weeks, and then people are going to realize that absolutely how busted it is. Yes, Calyrex Shadow can hit it and do a lot of damage, but think about all the Pokemon that can't one-shot it. I feel like Grimmsnarl Necrozma Duskmane with like Trick Room and Sunsteel Strike and Psychic Fangs, and the reason I'm saying Psychic Fangs is because Photon Geyser is technically a special move when you Dynamax, so it's not going to be great. I feel like this is just going to be insane when you run a weakness policy on it because it's really difficult to one shot it through screens with that prison armor active. I just see this thing absolutely dominating the format after a couple of weeks pass by and people give it decent time to develop. So yeah, and the Chrosma Dust main is going to be insane. So what I've done for the Gen 8 legendaries is just choose the ones that matter because some of them are just garbage. So what I have here is Zacian Crowned and I feel like Zacian Crowned is going to be an absolutely dominating Pokemon in the format. Uh, Intrepid Sword giving it plus one attack on switch in is really crazy when you have base 170 attack and 148 HP or 148 speed. It's also decently bulky at 92, 115, 115. Having access to Behemoth Blade to invalidate certain Dynamax plays because it doubles on Dynamax Pokemon, meaning that hey, your Dynamax doesn't matter, I'm just doing double damage to your double HP, is really huge. Sacred Sword could be good, but I could see people switching over to close combat as Stack Attacka becomes more common, since Stack Attacka can pretty easily live a Sacred Sword once you in intimidate the station. Um, and Wild Charge is going to be absolutely insane for breaking through things like Kyogre. So, I mean, yeah, you're going to want to run Play Rough too, uh, but you sort of end up with four move slot syndrome where yes you want to run all these moves but at some point you're gonna to have to drop something for protect because protect is just so amazing in a format like this i mean i feel like this is gonna be an insane pokemon the increase of zacian will increase the usage of intimidate pokemon uh, and i feel like arcanine in particular is going to see a lot of usage to counter zacian because unlike incineroar uh, arcanine is able to outspeed a lot of the legendary pokemon like kyogre and groudon and be able to go for things like Will-O-Wisp, Snarls, and against Zacian, it resists all of its stab moves, where a Play Rough could actually do a decent amount of damage to Incineroar. So yeah, I feel like that's something that you need to take into consideration with uh, Zacian. It's going to be insane. Now, I have non non crown form Zamazenta, and the reason being, when you look at the crown form Zamazenta, it just... It just sits there, 130 attack, and like these defenses are really good. But when you can't Dynamax Zacian and Zamazenta, your defenses are kind of eh. Yeah, you can do a lot of damage, but unlike Zacian, your offenses aren't as good in the face of an Intimidator. So I feel like Zamazenta, since you have to run that item, the Rusted Shield, to use the Crown Form, you might actually opt for the faster, more the faster, less bulky base form when you can run something like a Choice Band or uh, a life orb or anything like that just to increase your base attack stat because his, his base stats are phenomenal right 138 130 115 115 92 and plus one defense on switching could be really good he also gets access to things like play rough still he gets access to close combat he gets access to what, what else does he have access to i believe he gets psychic fangs yeah he gets psychic fangs he gets wild charge he has a lot of the same coverage as zamazenta or as a Zacian, but it's just better. And it gets access to Wide Guard too, which could be huge. So I don't know. I feel like if you're gonna use Zamazenta, it's gonna be the base form, but I don't see I don't see Zamazenta running around too much. Calyrex Ice is scary. Um like yes, base Calyrex is or not base Calyrex, but base um Glacier is probably a little bit better under Trick Room because it's slower and has similar offenses. However, this thing is really, really bulky, and I could see it running like a weakness policy, and it can set its own trick room now. It's really scary when you take all those things into consideration, and I feel like this thing is going to be responsible for an increase of stack attacking usage, an increase of Incineroar usage. It's going to be really scary, especially when you can't eat berries in front of it, so Incineroar's Figgy Berry is absolutely invalidated. That's insane. Beyond that, I'm just going to leave this here and scare you guys. It can speed swap. 
it can speed swap with your Pokemon. Like, let's say you have your Calyrex Shadow on the field, and the Calyrex Ice is like facing it down. He goes, wow, I really wish I was as fast as you and twice as bulky. And then you just speed swap your Calyrex Shadow and you go, oh no, I am now useless. And they're the scariest Pokemon ever created. Because at that point, it has 150 in defense speed, 130 in special defense, 165 attack, 100 HP. The only bad stat is special attack. What do you do? It also gets access to insane amounts of coverage like close combat, uh, like high horsepower. It has all these great moves. I feel like it's gonna be really scary. Calyrex Shadow's scarier, but this thing has the potential to just absolutely mess up games. Uh, and Calyrex Shadow, I mean, you can run a Life Orb or a Sash, and the fact that you can't eat berries is once again really scary. This fast of a Pokemon sets the bar very high for legendaries, and this Pokemon sets the pace for the format. Regieleki is going to see a huge increase in usage strictly because it can slow this thing down, in my opinion. On top of that, the screens are really important. You have to keep all that in mind. It has access to Mudshot for Max Quakes, much like, you know, Spectre. Um, it wants to run... Oh, I forgot to include one thing about this thing. It's not going to be running Icicle Crash. It's going to be running Glacial Lance. Glacial Lance hits both Pokemon. 130 base power. Get over it. It's, it's really strong. <laughs> this thing has... Spectral or Astral Barrage, which hits both Pokemon 120 base power and it can't be intimidated. So, you know, you're gonna have to snarl it. Granted, a, a single Sucker Punch would knock this thing out, but it can run things like Expanding Horse next to Indeedee. So if you have Indeedee next to this thing, which I feel like a lot of people are gonna use like Indeedee Calyrex, um, cause you get Follow Me and it also prevents Sucker Punch. It, it's really scary, and the fact that it gets plus one with every KO is just absolutely insane. So yeah, I think Calyrex is going to be the scariest Pokemon in the new format. But I don't know if it's going to be, like, the best overall. It's, like, the scariest, but maybe we're going to see a huge increase of Kyogre Tornadus. And, like, that's going to set the stage for the format. But yeah, that's all of the Pokemon that are allowed in the new format. Like, yes, I oh, I, I guess I completely skipped over Eternatus. Oh my god. <laughs> Eternatus. Um, can't Dynamax. Very fast. Decent against a lot of things. I mean, it's good, right? Dynamax Cannon is scary, but I don't know how great it's going to be. <laughs> I feel like it's just going to be like a decent Pokemon. I literally forgot about it because no one's been talking about Eternatus. Like, let's say we could use Eternatus G Max. Maybe then, or Eternamax. Maybe then he'd be good. Maybe. I'm kidding, but. I feel like Eternatus is just going to be a, a decent Pokemon overall. Um, it doesn't like Groudon. It is like really scary one with 130, 145. But when Calyrex Shadow exists, it kind of invalidates it because of Expanding Horse. Calyrex Ice kind of invalidates it. Uh, it's, it's just scary, pretty much. Poison Dragon is really nice. Um, unfortunately, you can't Dynamax this thing. So it's not like you could go for Max Oozes and then just sweep through there. So yeah, I think the fact that it can't Dynamax makes it not great. But yeah, uh, that's all the Pokemon that are allowed as a restricted form. Let me know which one you're going to be using in the upcoming format. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for more Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.